In this video, we're going to demonstrate troubleshooting in a patient with a difficult IV access. In this particular patient, as you will see, there are no visible veins, and we have applied a certain techniques and strategies in order to engorge the veins. However, the initial attempt was unsuccessful, so just as I am teaching how to, I actually failed. So see how I failed, why I failed, and what I did to correct that failure. Okay, so we're going to squeeze this a little bit. What this does is it forces the blood from your big veins down to the periphery. And that helps uh, small little veins on the surface come up. So we already see some veins that are popping up. It's all workable. So exsanguination is number one. Number two is uh, allowing time, you know, to for the veins to pop up. Ultrasound also is always an option, right, for deeper veins, but sometimes for a quick and easy, this may be just faster. With this particular vein, what's good about it is it has a two tributaries, so it kind of stabilizes it, and it fills pretty well. One of the most common mistakes that I see the nurses do is, is actually that they, they assume a position which you cannot really go superficially enough to place the vein, and it just goes through the vein. So I oftentimes bend it like this, which allows me to get in and lift it up as necessary. Two-point stabilization here, here. Again, a little tapping to cause vasodilation and inflammatory response, which helps the veins pop up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have done just what I wanted to avoid. Embarrassingly, I just did the mistake that I was trying to avoid. My needle in the catheter went through the posterior wall of the vein, ending up with the catheter in the subcutaneous tissue instead into the vein. Let's fix this. Now, I'm going to leave the tourniquet and S mark on so the veins still remain distended, but I will use a smaller catheter, 22 gauge this time, very shallow this time, and I will leave the 22 gauge catheter inside to prevent the hematoma. Let's fix this. We'll leave this one so it doesn't bleed. Okay. So you witnessed a failure and a success. We were in the lumen, but I may have advanced a little too fast. Okay. If you remove the pressure too soon, then it bleeds and oozes. And that was it. The failure to accomplish an IV access in a difficult IV patient and what to do after your first attempt failed. Remember, never take the catheter out because if you do, you're running the risk of creating a hematoma. Therefore, leave the catheter inside so you prevent hematoma formation and never release the tourniquet unless you really have to because you will lose the valuable time that it took for the blood to accumulate in the veins and make it more visible and accessible. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you never miss the future ones. And finally, don't forget to check out the Nysora's difficult IV access book and the app. It will be immensely useful to you and your colleagues.